So the question that keeps me up at night and shapes this book is this. 20 years from now, when we look around our neighborhoods and realize that a third or more of our church properties are no longer churches, what will we have lost? What, what might we have gained? What will the impact be on the social fabric of our communities? And what will we have done to encourage good when churches are gone? It's possible that as many as 100,000 buildings and billions of dollars of church-owned properties expected to be sold or repurposed throughout the United States by 2030. It's difficult to get precise data on that, but we do know researchers are making projections about the future of religious affiliation in the United States. I imagine many of you have seen the news about the new study, the new model, just released by the Pew Research Center that predicts if recent trends continue, Christians will make up fewer than half or less, even, of the U.S. population by 2070. There are, of course, new churches starting each year, but as of 2019, we have entered an era where more churches close each year than are opened. The reasons for that change, this change that we're dealing with, are beyond the scope of this symposium and this book. But the bottom line is that there are fewer and fewer people identifying as Christians and attending traditional church activities in church buildings. Therefore, there are far more church buildings today than will be viable or needed in the future. That's just the way it is. These buildings and properties will have to become something else or they will end up just empty and unused. This transition, this transition is happening. We are long past the days of revitalizing every church in order to keep them open and operating buildings that are too large or needing renovation. Church properties are going to become something different on a massive scale, whether we like it or not. The wave is upon us. This transition is a a once-in-a-many-generation shift. As that property is sold or becomes something else, it's not going to go back to being a church again in any foreseeable future. So the question before us is this. After the wave of sale and repurpose of churches crashes upon that shore, what will be left when the water flows back out to sea? What will our neighborhoods look like? If 40 out of 100 churches in a city or something else in 15 years, what will be lost? What could be gained? Where will the local Girl Scout troop or neighborhood association meet? Where do people go when grieving yet another mass shooting? Millions of people meet lifelong friends and partners at churches, get access to financial services not available to them through traditional banking, pick up food when bills get tight, cast their vote, What will replace churches on those properties when they become something else? Without thoughtful intervention, it's likely we will end up with church properties vacant and crumbling, purchased by investors and resold for personal personal profit, or end up as locations for new high-end housing units that enrich developers and investors while contributing to gentrification. So after this wave has receded, will church property have further contributed to injustice and the widening gap between rich and poor? Or will we have put our creative energy into new uses that leave communities more connected, more just, and with new programs and support that bring light and life into people's lives? I've always loved the children's tale, Stone Soup. You know this tale? There's many different versions, different kind of cultural um, perspectives on it, but in general, the outline of the story goes like this. A group of travelers arrive in a village carrying only a cooking pot. They set the pot on a fire in the middle of the village and they fill it with water. Then they drop in a stone and they begin cooking the soup. And at first the villagers just sort of peek out out of their windows wondering what is going on until curiosity gets the better of them and then they begin emerging to see what's happening. When they find out there's only a stone In the pot, they start to offer ingredients to make it taste better. One by one, they add something. One brings some garlic, another some greens, another a carrot. Eventually, almost everyone in the village has brought an ingredient, and the soup smells amazing. What started out as a stone in a pot has become a delectable soup 
through the collaborative contributions of the diversity of people. I have personally brought very little to the project besides a driving question. I dropped that stone in the pot, and the authors here have contributed their incredible ingredients. Together, we will think through the important aspects of this monumental shift in church property that is taking place all around us. You will note that while all of the authors care deeply about churches and church property, only a few of them are traditional pastors or church leaders. You will hear from property developers, urban planners, philanthropists, real estate professionals, and more. This is intentional. I invited these different people to contribute their unique ingredients to this soup because that's exactly how property development and reuse must happen as well. The only way something beautiful and good will emerge is if we work together with a wide array of partners, collaborators, and neighbors. So that question, when church property is gone, is it gonna be gone for good forever or gone for good, something good in its place? Thank you.